Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today we're going to talk about this photograph, which popped up recently on Facebook's Civil War Faces Marketplace. I saw it, I became interested in it, I had to have it, and now it's in my collection. There's really two reasons that I became interested in it. The first one is something I talk about on these episodes, which is cartes de visite have a utilitarian purpose. This is to say that when they came into vogue, coincident with the Civil War, they served a multitude of purposes. They were obviously used for portrait photography, but they were also used for advertisements. They were used to find missing persons. They were used as legal evidence in cases. They were used by the medical corps in the union to document surgeries. They were used by inventors to create models and photograph them. So a variety of purposes. And when I see an image like this, it speaks to me on that level. Another reason that it caught my attention was for the general who was pictured on the advertisement. Typically, we see William T. Sherman or Ulysses S. Grant or Abraham Lincoln on these images. And by the way, their images, their likenesses are usually used without permission and without penalty. So I'm accustomed to seeing those folks but I'm not, I'm not, def definitely not uh, used to seeing someone like John Grubb Park, who was a major general in the Union Army, pictured on an advertising CDV. So here he is. And the question is, why is he on this image? To further complicate matters, look at the image itself. It's an advertising for clothing and furnishing goods in a store owned by M.C. Swift. He is, in fact, Moses C. Swift, and he operated a store in New Bedford, Massachusetts. And so sort of scratching your head a little bit and thinking, um, Park, who was a Pennsylvanian, West Point educated, why is he connected with a store in New Bedford, Massachusetts? Well, these are the kind of research rabbit holes that I love going down. And I went down this one, couldn't resist it. And so I started looking into Park's record and I pretty quickly solved the mystery. He begins his war service in late 1861 and his first command is a brigade and that brigade is in the North Carolina Expeditionary Force that is overall commanded by Ambrose Everett Burnside. That command is made up of troops from Massachusetts and throughout other parts of New England. They go down to North Carolina, have a successful mission taking over a big swath of the coastline. After that, Park goes on to become chief of staff to Ambrose Burnside and winds up being with him through all the trials and tribulations of Antietam, Fredericksburg, Burnside's elevation to command of the Army of the Potomac, his downfall, uh, the siege later on, the siege of Knoxville, and then back in the east with Virginia in 1864 until Burnside is relieved of command in 1864. At that time, he's in charge of the Ninth Corps. Upon Burnside's uh, dismissal, Park takes command of the Ninth and leads it through the rest of the war. So there is a close connection between the Ninth Corps Burnside and Park literally from the beginning of the war. And so after the war is over, there appears to be no animosity between the two men, uh, even though Park succeeded Burnside in command of the Ninth Corps. They all go back to New England and they participate in reunions together. Many of those reunions are organized in Massachusetts. And so Park 
has a connection to Burnside and Massachusetts. So it's easy to explain the popularity there. To even add to the popularity, this image was produced by a company out of Providence, Rhode Island. And Burnside, at the beginning of the war, he was colonel of Rhode Island troops at the first battle of Bull Run. And in the expedition to North Carolina, Park was in command of a brigade, as I mentioned, and that brigade included Rhode Island infantry and artillery. So there's a double connection there between the Rhode Island Company in Providence that produced this carte de visite and also Massachusetts. So it's an interesting connection, and I think it speaks in a couple of in a couple of ways here. It suggests the tight-knit relationship between the army, despite the idea and the knowledge that the Union army was huge during the Civil War, those officers, that cadre of officers who were West Point educated, like Park and Burnside, who were classmates, by the way, another reason for them to be close together, it was really a small group. And so they hung out together they fought together in the war, and then if they survived, like Park and Burnside, they continued their relationship at reunions and elsewhere, civic duty, uh, uh, business relationships, all that kind of thing. So it's an interesting small world look. And again, I can't emphasize enough how the carte de visite was used for purposes of utility, including advertisements. So there you have it, the story behind this image and a little bit about the generalship of uh, Generals Park and Burnside. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on the